And so, just for the record, um, you're a Christian. Yes. And you're a Christian, Shona? Yes. And you're a Christian. Yes. Of course. Susanna. Um, what does it mean? How do you know you're a Christian? Well, the first basis of knowing you're a Christian is, of course, accepting Jesus Christ in your heart, confessing with your mouth, and believing in your heart. That's the first grounds for it. Um, I don't really like to say identify with Christian. I like to say I have a relationship with my Heavenly Father because the um, complexity around Christianity now today, it makes Christianity look so watered down that it's not even something that I want to be associated with. So right. I always just say I have a relationship with my Heavenly Father. So that's how I, I look at it. And um, just because other people are not doing right and call themselves a Christian, that's no reason not to say you're a Christian, right? Well, I, I, I still identify with saying I'm a Christian, but right. most people take, oh, you're a Christian, and they automatically back up, oh, you're religious. No, I'm not. Oh, I, I just have a relationship. It's a difference. And Shawnee, you're a Christian? Yes. And how do you know you are a Christian? Um, the fruit you bear in your life. So mm -hmm. the way you the way you live, the way you treat people, if it's in line with what Jesus taught and um, with the Holy Spirit living inside of you, it's just your your life speaks for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you do you proudly say you're a Christian or do you back down a little bit too because of um, sometimes I back down, but I I do make the the clarification that I'm I'm living this. It's not just yeah. a Sunday club, you know. I'm living this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, Susanna, are you a Christian? Yes. And how do you know you're a Christian? I know I'm a Christian because I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, and I am I live for Him. I live for Him. I acknowledge Him in my ways and in how I treat people and in how I live. Right. Like he's a part and parcel of my everyday, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I hear that you guys are socialites, right? It depends on the circumstances with me. <laughs> <laughs> with you? Are you a socialite? What definition are you using? For socialite? Yeah. I don't really have one. Are you like I just social? hear that you're like really social. 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 Yeah. Outgoing, like Outgoing. to be in the mix. Mm -hmm. Are you a socialite? I can be social. And but I'm not anti-social. I am not anti-social. How about socialite? <laughs> <laughs> I can be social, sir. I know, but I'm not asking if you can be social. But are you a socialite? Where is social butterfly? Social yeah. butterfly. Thanks. Are you a social butterfly? I can be. So, are you one right now? Yes. <laughs> and then you turn it off sometimes? Not that I turn it off. Like, it's more like when it's, when he calls for it, I'm available for that. Uh, when he calls for it. I well, who called for it? So, like, going to a gathering or engaging in dialogue, like debate. Oh, okay. Or whatever requires being a socialite. So are you socialite right now in this moment? <laughs> so yes. Chanel call you up, girl, come on, we got to be socialite <laughs> on Jesse's show. Are you socialite right now? Yeah. Ooh, and I was surprised Chanel was a socialite. Up me a social butterfly. Mm -hmm. Are you a social butterfly right now? Yeah. And what does it mean to be a social butterfly? You're just, it's easy to bring some kind of energy to conversations. You hang out with a lot of people. You just like being around people. And you're a social butterfly. It depends. On what? On the mood I'm in. So do you tell Shawnee, I don't feel like being a social <laughs> butterfly tonight. I will tell her if she asks. I oh, ain't, yeah. got, I ain't mm -hmm. feeling that. I'll tell her, yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Do all three of you go to the same church? No. No, no we no. are, what, leaders of, uh, what is it, a group? Yes, Pinky Promise. Uh, Pinky uh, Promise. Pinky yeah. Promise? Yeah. What is Pinky Promise? So it's an organization found by Heather Lindsay, who's stationed out in Atlanta. And she formed this organization to help bring Christian women together um, all across the country um, so that we can do life together, honoring God with our lives, with our bodies, um, mm -hmm. preparing us for marriage, um, and also walking in confidence in your singleness as well. Oh, yeah. So it's like we're Pinky Promise Los Angeles, yeah. and we're all co-leaders of And that. so you guys, do you uh, Skype with her or FaceTime? How do you, how do you fellowship together? Do you ever do that? 
we just come together as a but group. But not with the leading Atlanta. Not with her because there's so many different branches. And it's, oh, and it's, I see. It's, it's all the, over. It's outside the, the United States, yeah. actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I never heard of this. Yeah. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> so were you raised with your father and mother? No, sir. By just your mother? Just my mother, yes. And you say your mother used to beat you? My mama didn't beat me. She, she should have beat me every day I walked in the house, if you want me to be honest. Yeah. But whenever, because I had a smart mouth, and I had to apologize to my mom later on in life, once I got older and had my own children. Like, you know, I apologize for disrespecting you, but my mom used to, she used to choke me. You should choke me. She used to choke me like, with both hands. Like, like really? <laughs> yeah. Like, girl, yeah, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Really? Now she punched me in my face one time, and that was only because wow. I kept doing this. So she just clocked me right in my mouth. How and old I were still you? Kept I was sixteen. Really? So yeah. I and was, what made you rebel? Like become like that? I was angry when I was growing up. About what? I was just angry. I, I couldn't tell you why okay. then. I know now, um, but I, I had a lot of anger towards my mom. I didn't have my dad around because I was born July 11. He was killed July 14. Wow. So that whole dynamic is different. But amazing. just I had I have my aunties. My mom's had seven sisters. So I had people around. But there was always some type of anger I had with my mom. Right. Because I, I don't know. I know now it's just because she didn't really know how to outwardly express love right and that was just because of her upbringing so when i would reach out to her it was more of a shutdown you know so i'm like okay i don't have time for that so i was just always angry with her so that's, that's why amazing. she said clock me <laughs> <laughs> so did you become like your mother um, you know how you become like whomever you're yeah, angry you know, at oh absolutely um i did start to see my mother's ways in me yeah. more so when i got married yeah. it's like the whole top just blew off Everything that I thought I was getting away from was just in my face. That's right. So, yes. Are you still like her? No. How did you overcome her? How did I overcome my mom or how it, did I overcome my problems? Your mother. Because <laughs> I, you were not yourself. You were your mother. So you're acting and doing just what she did right. to you. How did you overcome her? So I overcame because that's just really iniquity passed down through generations right. of DNA. So I overcame that honestly just by... Uh, renewing my mind with the word of God, really like consecrating myself and really being determined to not to break, to be the generational curse breaker, right. determined to not live the same way that I saw growing up and to do something different in my family and not impart the same thing that my mother imparted into me and to my children. So you don't treat your kids the way your mother treat you, treated you? No. Not at all? Um, I do have to say, because uh -huh. it's challenging. The hardest thing for me, because my children are four, two in two months. So the hardest thing for me now, my four year old is doing things that she should be doing when she's eight and nine. Like, you know, the little sneaky stuff, the lying, you know, I'm like, wait a minute, this she's too young for this. Right. So I have I'm learning how to handle her differently, like the seeking attention stuff. You know, normally you would just I would, you know, you would just whoop her. Or just like, go sit down on something, you know, what's right. your problem? Yeah. But I'm learning not to do that. But at first, it was it was an issue for me. And I you did see her. my mom. No, I didn't choke her. You, you, you snowed her? No, I didn't snowed her. But they did. They do get belts every now and then. Oh, they do. Like yeah. three or four little taps. And so you were married at one time? No, I'm still. You're I'm still, still married? married. Yeah. Is it hard for your husband to live with you? <laughs> <laughs> it was at the beginning because I used to clock him too. Really? Yeah. You to hit your husband? Yeah. <laughs> what would he do when you clocked him, as you say? Well, um, I used to be the person that'll punch first, ask questions later. So if it was something that I didn't like, or if you talked to me a certain way. Um, really? Yeah. I can see you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me can doing that. Can you see that. her doing that? No. No. <laughs> can you see it? She's a new creature in Christ. She a what? A new creature in Christ. I All hope things so. have passed away. All <laughs> things have become new. I hope so. <laughs> and so your husband allowed you to hit him? Yeah. Did he, would he hit you back? No, he wouldn't. Why not? Why would he? Then we really would be fighting. <laughs> but he, all he had to do is clock you once. That's it. <laughs> you had to hit a lot of time to get him down. Uh-uh. I used to tell my husband I fight dudes. So you could try me if you want to. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you see him as a beta male when he would let you hit him and not hit you back? No. You know how most men a bear hug you like? What are you like? Stop! Right what about. are you doing? So no. 
Wow. You know, so I, yeah, I realized I had a lot of anger towards men in my marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So. Why do you have so much anger toward men? Um, I don't anymore. Right. But I did because um, it, if we want to get technical about it, yeah. it really starts back in the womb, being conceived out of wedlock. Yeah. And um, when you conceive out of wedlock, the curse of the bastard comes. All of, a whole bunch of stuff comes spiritually. So that dy dynamic there was God automatically off rip rejected me. My mother rejected me. Father rejected me. Well, he re I felt rejected because he died. Not, he not necessarily that you. he right. rejected me, but that's, that's so what. True. That's how it filtered through me as an infant, as a fetus. Yeah. My father died. Then you add the dynamics of okay, he got murdered. Then that's a whole different dynamics too. So that's amazing. Yeah.